Hey everybody, we are back and we have Sankar with us today that we're gonna talk about the MM500 from Odyssey, the new uh, Manny collaboration for this awesome studio mixing headphone. Thank you so much for joining us, appreciate it. It's good to see you. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. So tell us a little bit about this headphone. I mean, it's been all the rage. We've actually done, I think, three or four videos on it already because it's just worthy of, of you know, the recognition and uh, it's very, it's been very well received. So tell us a little bit about the thoughts that went into designing it, the reasons why, the partnership with Manny, and uh, who do you think this headphone is for? Sure. So um, we have always been selling to the pro audio world from the beginning because it, it, you know, people when we introduce LCDX, people started buying it, uh, but we haven't put any uh, focus. You know, we, uh, you know, focus into selling directly to that market right. because we were both in audiophile and sure. um, you know other things. So uh, about uh, three four years ago, we decided well, let's put some uh, effort into it and make headphones specifically for that category because it's right. also uh, growing significantly. We can see it from our Definitely. other headphone sales, especially. So, uh, but and from we have been working with Manny since almost 2014. Okay. When he brought one of bought one of our headphones and one day called us and said, "Hey, I am mixing an album with this because it's so good." And then Manny used to be a speaker only guy before. Right. And then uh, he said, you know, uh, more and more of my mixes go into headphones and more people listen on headphones. True. So I want to also check it. That was the entry point for him. And uh, he came in and he said, these are good that I can actually start mixing. So that's how we started working with him. And then, uh, you know, when we decided we want to work in um, pro audio, uh, we went back to Manny, and Manny said he will come on board. You know, because awesome. I don't think it's this, this these kind of collaborations work when both parties are invested. Right. In it, right. Right. So Manny is officially head of pro audio for Audible. That's awesome. So, so, okay. So and uh, and he's a leading producer. He has in last last year he won the Grammy for best uh, mixing. And he has about ten Grammys or so. Yeah. So so we get the experience of somebody like him. Uh, collaborating with us and so we thought okay let's make this uh, line just focus on pro audio and uh, that's how this whole thing started so the mm line this is so this is just the beginning then we could probably maybe in the future expect to see different iterations down the road or something like that correct I mean that's a long-term goal yeah uh, long term yeah, yeah. because uh, you know we think uh, we want to put more focus on pro audio in the sure. line. Uh, we have audio file range that we use LCD headphones and now the carbon yeah then we have um, the uh, gaming headphones, Mobius, Pentos, right. and uh, those headphones coming. So, and this will be a focus of Pro Audio will be based on LCDX and MM500. Beautiful, I love it. And I mean, you kind of uh, also the LCD5. I remember when um, the LCD5 launched, there was uh, some great video content you guys put out. I believe I saw it on your YouTube channel about. Um, different uh m like a movie studio that was cutting the sound for a movie production and they had shared in multiple you know pairs of headphones with the lcd5 between it so they could basically hear the same for the audio from if they were working here you know in this state or country or wherever it was and then the end user would be able to hear it here so they could kind of go back and forth as a team because this was during the pandemic okay. so not everybody could be together like you know yeah. we were all used to for so long so, um, so we have several studios using yeah. it. Not just those headphones, right? And we have several studios using the LCDX, right. for example, right. or even LCD5. Um, we have, uh, in fact, um, uh, one of the big movie studios in LA uses a lot of our gaming headphones, Mobius, right. for 5.1 QC. Ah, because they have okay. to deliver a lot of yes, movies in 5.1. For the Dolby and, and all everything, yeah. And then, so they actually use uh, Mobius. They have this one studio with about 42 Mobius units. Wow, see, yeah. that's cool. So when you're listening to music, I don't know if people ask you this question or not, or maybe it is a common question. What, which headphones do you gravitate towards the most uh, from Odyssey? It's the latest one, right? Or the one the that latest and greatest? On, yeah. Or the one we are working on. Uh, of late, I actually have now a, a carbon uh, yeah. that I really like also. Those are beautiful um, sounding, yeah. yeah. So the carbon and the the barrier of entry is a little bit higher for sure. this because of the amplifier. Right. Um, but, um, you know, it's when, when you get a good source and stuff, 
the carbon sounds sublime. Actually. Have you listened to the carbon with tube amplification? Yeah, we have. You the like Wu, the you Wu's, like it with the tubes? Uh, yeah, we have a Wu Audios. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, the latest one. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what I th we have it actually over down here. That's what I was saying. Their latest Energizer is supposed to be phenomenal with exactly the carbon. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. Um, yeah, and and. Uh, uh, but we also get all these prototype amplifiers and stuff that people haven't released here. <laughs> oh, so uh, you get to taste yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of special yeah. recipes. That's Correct. cool. Yeah. So, so many times we get a uh, lot of cool amps. In fact, I think the Wu Audio amp, we have had it for a while now. Yeah, yeah. You got to fir first look and first listen. That's cool. So, so this headphone is geared towards the pro audio world, but music listeners can also still enjoy it. It's not just for that, but this is a great headphone for mixing. Um, and in my case, like the time I had it and the time I was able to use it and review it, I actually brought it back this week to give it back, which is always sad when I have to give a headphone back, but you know, that's the way it yeah. goes. Uh, I was using it for some editing some of my videos, like so vocals, because this is a very mid-range, like you can hear the mid-range, the excellence in the mid-range. So I was able to really monitor the levels of vocals on video really exceptionally well. So I see a very good use case for people in sure. video production as well for this headphone that maybe don't want to go to the LCD5. Now, personally, I own the LCD5, so that's my headphone that I use for all kinds of different things, but... Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, I think Manny spoke about this also yeah. quite a bit. Uh, as we started making these headphones um, in the beginning of the year, before much before we released it, um, we gave the final prototypes, like uh, before production units, to Manny, and Manny said, you know, I proof of... Uh, the, you know, the proof is in the pudding. I actually want to mix albums with it and see right. how the output comes. So at that time, he was working on Kendrick Lamar's uh, latest album, yeah. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Yep, yep. So he said, I'm going to just use this first as a primary tool, not just for QC or something, but right. a primary tool for mixing and see yeah. how it sounds. And he talked about it publicly in, at NAM as well. Yeah. So he started using it um, uh, as a tool and uh, and you know you can check the album out also. See yeah. How it sounds, yeah. Well, and the beauty is it can go anywhere with a music producer. So I mean, a lot of times music producers or mixing engineers they're on the road traveling. You know, for they might have public relation events, but they need to bring their laptop and they're doing recording mixing in their hotel room. And as Manny said, like he can bring that with him everywhere he goes, exactly. and so but, but can also, others. So this headphone um, is a very enjoyable headphone. It's not like yes. a dry monitoring no, headphone. It yeah. sounds you know, I mean, you know, you can use it um, for, example, yeah, to enjoy music. music yeah. yeah. So, what are your favorite types of music you like to listen to when you're not working? What do you What do you relax to, and so then what do you energize yourself with? Almost anything. But um, one of my favorite musicians when I grew up was an uh, Indian musician uh, called Air Rahman. So when we started Odyssey, he was one of the first people to try Odyssey headphones, and he really liked them. So um, I actually did an interview with him last month. Um, oh, really? That's awesome. He's a phenomenal headphone. I mean, he's my favorite musician. But sure. I, I mean, I listen to everything, a lot of different, you know, I don't, I'm very agnostic in the time. Yeah, you know? yeah. But um, he's one of my favorite musicians, and um, uh, when he was, he would perform at the Hollywood Bowl uh, yeah. in July. So just before it, we actually interviewed him on how he composes music and how he creates music. So that's probably pretty special for you to have your your company and do an interview with one of your favorite musicians. It's kind of like a full circle, kind of one of those moments in life where you're like, this is yeah. pretty darn cool. Yeah, I mean, many, lot, there are quite a few musicians who use our headphones. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, it's always interesting to see. And for us, one of the most interesting things to see is how they create the music. Right. And what is their process? How do they think about music? Um, and also producers and stuff. How do they envision music? I mean, uh, as we start working more closely with some of these guys, um, it's darn interesting to see how they, you know, everybody has their own approach. Right. So, yeah. Their own technical approach, their own artistic approach. It differs from each artist yeah. to the next. Very cool. Let's check and see if we have any chats here from the, or any uh, questions here from the live chat. Yeah. Yeah, we do actually. It says, um, okay, it says here, let me, uh, Sonic Visions, hey, what's up, man? Nice to see you, Sonic Visions. It says, can you ask Sandcar if there will be an option for vegan leather or synthetic material for the MM500 LCD fiber carbon? Yeah, so definitely we will have them. Definitely uh, I don't so. I the time frame. It depends upon production and stuff, but 
we will definitely have vegan options for both ML500 and L35. Awesome. Carbon, I believe. I, I have to check if carbon will have it. So it sounds like that's a yes. It's coming soon, so stay tuned on that. Great question. Thank you. And then... Let's Sheldon see, Sheldon wants to, wants to know if there's going to be, uh, you're going to do more non-planner driver products in the near future. Sure, um, we already make, uh, we already make electrostatic drivers. Right. With, uh, so we make the carbon, and we also make a version of carbon for MRI uh, machines, right, with the medical use. Right. So we have to, uh, we just introduced, you know, so, so one of the, things that we want to make sure if you look at it across all our products not just carbon or uh, plain on headphones we want to do something that is slight you know not take for just for the sake of differentiation we want to make new innovative products right right so we you know could we make a contract based headphone yes we can make it you know um, question is, is is can we bring something uh, more uh, new to it you know right. what would be our contribution to it so our core uh, one of the reasons all is exists right it's because if you look back at it is because we um, invest in innovation and something new. Right. So I think part of our disease um, uh, core identity is that. So if there is something that we can do, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, planar or electrostatic right. or uh, phone speakers, we will definitely do it. Like right. if you see our carbon headphone, almost every single electrostatic product before us always had a thin film and a coating on top right either like titanium metal deposition like uh, he 1000 he one yep. or um, uh, other type of coating, yeah. right and uh, carbon when we made the film we put carbon nanotubes inside the film so yeah. there's no coating the film itself becomes conductive so that allowed us to do something very different so in fact in carbon, the normal version of carbon you get is 580 volts by its voltage for the stacks. Right. But the medical version of carbon we make is 800 volts by its voltage. Wow. Because we need to have very high SPL for the noise cancellation. Sure. So sure. that, but that we can do it by just doping more carbon nanotubes. Right. We have that kind of control, and we have made different versions of it. So we are definitely open to doing new things. Um, uh, and uh, you can also see it in some other non-audiophile products, like we just introduced a small speaker product. Yeah, I saw that. That uh, was pretty cool. Uh, it has two MEMS microphones, actually, right. and a planar speaker. It's perfect for live streaming and, and doing for, or uh, video chats. Video or, chat, or, right? Yeah. And then it removes all the noise. From yeah. Your, uh, if we actually slick. should have used it for here. Yeah, I it probably should have. all the noise. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it works really well for this kind of environment. Yeah. Um, and it removes all the noise. The background uh, noise, background it cuts noise, it. Um, you know, dog barking, vacuum cleaners, all those things go away. And That's it through the software, basically? It's, and no, it's on, on hardware. In oh, room. okay. So there is a small dialog semiconductor uh, chipset with neural network accelerators okay. inside the product. So it doesn't matter what software you use. You can use Zoom or uh, Google Hangout or uh, phone call or even WhatsApp call. Right. The noise is filtered on the on unit the before, unit. Yeah, okay, the before it gets before in. It even hits that's it. So, brilliant. So that's something that's easy to use for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, um, so, oh, let's see, we got another question. <laughs> Uh, it says, are you planning on continuing to produce the LCD4? No, I don't think the LCD4 is gone. The 4Z stays though, the right? The 4Z stays, yeah. The 4Z stays. I think I'm going to be reviewing the 4Z next. I'm going to grab one oh, from Martin okay. before I leave town and give these other two back. Okay. Um, so, so, no LCD4 though, right? So, I mean, we never say no for anything. Yeah, never say never. Yeah. Say no for anything, but, uh, um, it is, you know, but, you know, even before we, uh, I was talking to a clinical, uh, you know, I met him for the first time, but we have in the past done a lot of, uh, I won't say one-offs, but some very interesting projects. Right. Like uh, The one you did with Shit Audio was cool. The, yeah, the LCD app. Yeah, that was uh, neat. That was, that's one thing, but also even uh, research projects, uh, you know, the big company Valve, right? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Steam, right? So they came to us a few years ago and wanted to make a headphone that's open, no ear pads, nothing right. like almost like the old. Uh, Just wide open. Wide open. Yeah. Uh, for some uh, virtual reality tests. So we actually made that's one cool. for him, and uh, it's in the wall uh, blog. And uh, Chronicle actually saw it and came and spoke to me. 
and said, hey, what about the hut? So we have done those kind of things. There is actually even a jacking float with the car drivers. Wow. If I want. So we never say So no. you never know. So yeah. maybe. So that's a solid never know. You maybe, maybe not. Let's see, it says, uh, will you bring back the chrome, gil chrome grills for LCD5 in the future? Or what about wood rings? Um, yeah, that's a little bit more tricky. That's the whole uh, weight the, conversation, the right? Weight conversation. Yeah. So, so the grills on LCD5 are uh, magnesium to keep the weight low. They, so we have to paint them. Right. Uh, but again, uh, so LCD5 is fairly new. LCD4 yeah. is from 2016. Yeah. You know, almost seven years ago. You know, ago. So um, at some point, if you see here, this one is based on the LCD5. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as overall for like housing, but you, you're using magnesium what a rings, magnesium, magnesium uh, versus the rings, acetate. Yeah, and also a headband. Yeah. So, so there is always an option to change these things. We just have to find, and, and we don't, just don't change them for changing sake. Sure. We many times marry some technology uh, development that we have done right. into the type of product, right? So we just have to find out the right, uh, uh, right uh, mixture. The right. right. Thing. Yeah, and I mean, the LCD5 is still technically lighter weight, 419 or 20 grams, somewhere around there, versus 495 grams of this. And, you know, I did compare the two just for the fun of the video's sake. And uh, the LCD5 is definitely lighter weight on your head. You can feel that. So that those acetate rings and the carbon fiber that you use with that, they make a difference in overall weight. So, um, But we also have to, the other issue that we have to balance is to see you know, the support your product. It yeah. gets roughly handled in the Oh, studio. I love that about I don't this. Want yeah. to, the I fingerprints. Don't want to put acetates and stuff. Totally. Because, you know, what if you drop it and it cracks or something in the studio? You don't I agree. To... No, I think you guys crushed it in a good way with this design because, one, I like the um, contrast between the gray and the black and then the kind of the, the, sh the metallic behind, you know, the front facing area. I should point over here. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think this design is great for that production type individual mm -hmm. um, and then the LCD 5 is more of that kind of you know luxurious if you will so okay. I think it's great so when the LCD 5 was released and the carbon they were released fairly close to each other okay. have we seen more popularity with the LCD 5 since it's you know like you said lower cost of entry having to have its own energizer or has it been pretty close how, how what has the uh, response LCD5 been is Far more popular for, than, yeah, far more. Far more yeah. popular than carbon primary because of the barrier of entry. Right. You need a good amplifier. Yep. And uh, there is nothing cheaper than three thousand, four thousand dollars in the market. You know, right. It's, uh, a barrier. And also, uh, carbon itself. Uh, you know, it, it's an electrostatic headphone. People right. are still, you know. But again, this was our first electrostatic yeah. product. We want to make more of these things in future. Sure. You know, because there's a lot more. Uh, ideas we have of how to make them. You did, yeah, but you did excellent with your first release. So yeah, I, yeah. I think is I've heard it several times. It's phenomenal. So yeah, I, we are very proud of what we did with yeah. carbon. Especially, it's it's we call it a product with a purpose because it was initially designed right. for MRI. Such a good and, reason. Um, yep. They have done about 200 you know tests at UCLA with about 295 patients, and it's very interesting result. A lot of people when they did the test. Um, when they put the headphones on, uh, the, they don't move that much because they're not, just, you know, they're yeah. distracted by the music in a good way. Yep. So um, what happens is about of the patients, about I believe about uh, 30 or 40 percent of the patients thought they were inside the MRI machine for less time than they actually were. In. Means so it made it a good, better experience. It is definitely a better experience. And especially for children too, I would imagine, like right. super important because they're scared, you know. Yeah. So we have a pediatric version of that small yeah. planar driver, a small right. electrostatic It's probably driver. cute as hell, isn't it? Uh, it's it really is. cute, I bet. Uh, I, I have a daughter, so I was immediately uh, thinking how cute no, she looks. it actually is a chin phone, right? It, oh. it looks weird. Uh, <laughs> it's not a headphone. We call it a chin phone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's an interesting product, yeah. That's cool. Let's see if we got... Uh, All right. Ah, the so clamping foot on MM500. Yeah, there's yeah, something looking at it. W yeah. Will's, Will's uh, yeah, he, he yeah, said. Yeah, definitely. That was a good question uh, well, by Will. Um, quest, yeah. So it is, um, you know, it, it looks like there is some variation in the clamping force that they are looking at. Um, I think uh, we will get that resolved in a you know, couple of weeks. Yeah. And I mean, this is spring steel. I don't know how much flex it has, but I know that other reviewers have said if you set it 
on books for a while, you should get a little. I don't know though. There might be an official. I think there's. I think somebody on from Odyssey posted on the Head Five forum um, for the MM500 on the proper way that you could technically reduce some of the clamps. So check out the Head Five forum, and there's an official response from Odyssey on there, and I believe they do address that a little bit. So, yeah. I mean that's and uh, you know. In the long run, it'll be fixed so that it's all concept. So right. we have, um, we are using multiple suppliers and stuff, and it gets really complex. Yeah, of course. And then um, it says here, LCDR was the most gorgeous artist. Yeah, yeah. We got I a good, agree. got a it good, was, good compliment very, right there yeah, from Christopher. Was, yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, helpful. Yeah, and yeah, Sonic Visions likes it too. He wants you to keep producing it. He said. Uh, and then, let's see, oh, what is your favorite DAC and amp for the M500 that you've been using it with the most, that you like listening to? Uh, we, as a producer, have to be agnostic, we don't want to say, but one of the amps that I see a lot of pros using now for this is RME. Yeah, uh, so yeah. actually drives it very well, um, and uh, it's... And you've got a lot of equalization built into that unit, so for a producer I could see how they would like to play with that. Well, and then you also, you have your Odyssey Reveal plugin as well, which you use with LCDX, uh, we don't have it but we don't have it for this, no. But maybe eventually down the road, yeah. Oh, and you know what, now that I have it here, I want to ask, this is for me personally, um, when will you guys drop your uh, Rune profile for the LCD5? I know it's in the works. Yeah, well, because there's a parametric the EQ that you drop for almost every headphone, Correct. and that's, it takes uh, it up like doop, a little notch every time. So that's Kartik. You need to. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll go. I'll go bug him later because. Yeah. Every time you guys do that, it's like every yeah. headphone levels up. Yeah, Kartik is a professor at uh, Texas A&M. Uh, yeah. He he's the one designing it, right? Yeah. He is the one who is responsible because he's a big Rune fan. So he basically started doing it for every one of our headphones. It's fantastic. Um, he's doing good. He's here for his, I think, first can jam now. He's oh, really? Oh, AI cool. So he is going around. So well, all after our video, you have to point him out so I know yes. to talk to him. Because um, I know you have to go to a meeting here pretty quick. So we'll take maybe a question or more. Um, using the filter, this would have been cool to hear. Looking forward to trying one. How do you decide what things will go through crowdsourcing? Oh, that's an interesting question. So how do you decide what things will go through crowdsourcing and... Yeah. So, so it's very simple for yes. us. If it is a new market we are going after where we do not have any presence. For example, when we released the Mobius, gaming was a very new market for us. So we decided to go with crowdsourcing, not because of we cannot make it in, in a way it is, but also helps us to gauge interest, get feedback on the product, what people like, and then also gives us some amount of publicity. Right. So Mobius was the first product. I think before that we tried it on some small things just to get ready for Mobius. Uh, we tried it on the King amplifier just to see how it works so that we can make Mobius with it. Uh, with crowdsourcing, that was the first uh, crowdfunding, I mean. And then we tried it again for filter. Um, you know, some sometimes it's very successful, like Mobius. Right. Filter was not so much, but uh, um, it also, but it helps us in a big way to get some feedback. Feedback, because sure. Many times when we enter these markets, we don't have enough experience, and uh, and we are very aware of it. You know? Right. But also, sure. gaming. Uh, you know, when we, before we entered the gaming market uh, with Mobius and Pendos, we were very worried about it. How well audio files are provided, sure. perceived, obviously, right? Right. And um, this, we are a new entrant in the market. Uh, is our product sufficiently different that people will like it, all that stuff. So, so far, the response has been phenomenal. The Mobius is probably, the Mobius is not probably, it's Mobius and Pendos are uh, by far the biggest the number of units sold uh, yeah. that we do, right? And uh, it's growing every year, we can see it's it. fantastic. And, and it has also give, given us more exposure into people, and we see many people buying uh, Mobius headphone and then upgrading to Of course, stuff yeah. Like that. So you build that loyalty, uh, customer loyalty. So, so we will continue in those markets, uh, but the key decision we have always tried to figure out whether we want to do crowdfunding or not is this is a new market, but this give us enough feedback. Makes sense. Great question, Sheldon. Thanks, man. Um, we've got maybe time for another question or two. 
Um, I think Sonic Visions asked if you also like to listen to speakers and also like in a previous question I believe he said and then also do you ever think headphones will overtake speakers in terms of presenting uh, sound stage? So sound stage is a little bit trickier. Um, I mean, we of course we do love speakers. Sure. Um, and I have a pair. Of, we have a Odyssey a pair of speakers designed by CDO. Right. Um, Odyssey speakers? Oh man, I'd love to hear this. He basically has his own speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was there before Odyssey as well. That's cool. Um, so it, in fact, we have done shown some kind of speakers in the past. There was one at Can Jam. About 10 years ago, we showed a speaker made out of uh, about uh, 50 or 60 planar uh, LCD2 drivers wow. in an array. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, the original, you know, the LCD2 drivers can take significant amount of power. Sure, sure. They can take up to 10, 10 watts of power. Right. Uh, I mean, don't try that. Yeah, sorry. don't try that at home, guys. Don't try that at home. <laughs> uh, but uh, we had a four ohms version that was able to do um, but going back to the question, uh, in terms of sound stage, I think it's hard to do sure. DSP, but with proper things like, I think those kind of computational audio is what they call it now, um, is advancing so rapidly. Right. Um, you know, what we were able to not do, you know, able to do even two years ago is now completely different, right. you know, because the new chipsets are getting more powerful. For example, one of the latest chipsets we are using has uh, high fi core uh, 5, right. uh, which has enormous DSP capabilities uh, that you can pretty much write all sorts of new algorithms for. So I think those will improve. But it's also the sound stage and all these things are also, especially for gaming, is also related to visual cues and all right. that stuff. Sure. And uh, in fact, I was talking to Professor Lee from uh, UK. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but he has uh, a big spatial audio research lab in Oxford. And one of the things he mentioned was, for many people, when they try to do spatial audio, if you wear it on a headphone, uh, especially trying to replay it on a headphone, your brain looks at what room you are in and tries to somehow, if you try to reproduce a different room right. on your headphone, but you are in a, let's say you are in a, you're trying to reproduce a big room, yeah. but you are in a very tiny room, your brain cannot accept process the fact, it, yeah. process it, and basically messes up with your specialization. So he said many times, Having you know, so so it, it's actually published research. He published it in ADS, yes, where he said the room discrepancy of what you are in and what room that you're reproducing in your headphone uh, actually matters quite a bit. So he was trying to see if you can measure your existing room that you are in and immediately add it to the headphone. So there's a lot of research going yeah. on uh, in this area that is uh, very interesting. That is cool. Awesome. And a uh, compliment from Will C. Even though he gave us, gave us, <laughs> he was making fun of the clamp a little bit. He absolutely loves how the MM500 sounds. So keep up the great work, he says. So we'll add that. Um, and I know you got a meeting in like two minutes. So um, guys and girls out there, thank you so much for joining us. Sankar, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. And um, are you going to be here tomorrow? Yes. So maybe tomorrow we might get you back for a few more minutes if you have time. If not. This was a great opportunity. Please uh, check out the MM500 if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more live streaming. We'll be doing this all weekend long. And thank you all for your great questions and joining us. We appreciate you. This is what it's all about in the community. Thanks, guys. Thank we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for joining. And thank you for uh, yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we had fun. See you guys.